Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today... Is this the smallest fountain pen in existence? That's right, today I will be reviewing the Caveco Lilliput fountain pen. And this is a very tiny fountain pen. I wanted a tiny fountain pen because I wanted a pen that I could fit inside my Midori passport size traveler's notebook. I had other pens that I like to use when I'm on the go, things like my Lamy Safari, but it's just so big in comparison to the Midori that it wasn't really working for me. I couldn't put it inside the cover because it just bulges out so much. It just really adds to the bulk of the cover. If I clipped it on the outside, oops, clipped it on the outside like that, it's just so much bigger than I kind of need. I like the size of the pen, I like using it. All these other pens that I have, like the Lamy 2000, still just a little bit too large for the Midori. So I wanted something small, and I just searched small fountain pen. I don't know how I had never come across the Caveco Lilliput before, but I found it. I found that there were several different models available. There is a copper one, fully metal copper pen. There is a fire blue version, but those are all over $100. I found this special edition green in aluminum, and I found it for a good price, and I thought, you know, that might work. It seems small. I didn't quite realize how small it was until I actually got it in my hands. I have large hands. That's something that I always kind of forget, I guess, that my hands are larger than the typical human being. But if you look at that in comparison to my hand, it's just minuscule. It's a little bit larger when you unscrew it and post it. Nope. So it's a little bit bigger, a little over four inches, and it actually works. It's big enough that I can actually use the pen, but we're gonna look at it a little bit more closely. I'll show you how it writes, talk a little bit about the specs, and just what I think about it overall. The Caveco Lilliput fountain pen. So here's a closer look at the Caveco Lilliput fountain pen in the limited edition green. Remember that this clip was purchased separately. This does not come with the pen. When I did receive the pen, it came in a box like this, with the green sleeve. Inside you have the Caveco tin. It's a little bit different than other Caveco tins that I have gotten in the past. And it came in a plastic sleeve with one Caveco Blue Standard International Short Ink Cartridge inside. And remember, you can't use any other ink cartridges or converters. It basically has to be the Short International. It's just too narrow, the barrel, to fit any of the Caveco Squeeze converters or the piston converters that Caveco also offers. So, like I said, the pen is tiny. Sometimes I forget you know, I have big hands, I understand that, but when I'm watching other reviews of pens or pictures, things that don't have the best context, I, I can't always tell just how small something is until I get it in my hands. I mean, just look at that. <laughs> this pen is absolutely minuscule. Let's do a little pen lineup here, actually. We have the Caveco Lilliput. Here is a Lamy Safari. Very standard, very common pen. Put that next to it. It dwarfs it. We have a Pilot Custom 823. Place that next to the Caveco Lilliput. Here is a Lamy 2000. One of my favorites. There we go. And here's another Caveco. This is the Caveco Sport. This is in brass. Even that is much larger than the Lilliput. And then just like basic ballpoint, uh, you know, disposable Bic pen right there. Here is a Zebra, I can't remember what this is, a 701 maybe, but it's the all metal version, another ballpoint. As you can see, the Caveco is tiny compared to all of these pens. Now, if I post it, it takes a few turns. 
Obviously, it gains a little bit in length, but then if I post any of these other pens, the Pilot is a good example, because this is a very standard fountain pen. It is much larger, both in barrel diameter and just in length. Some of the measurements on this Caveco, the diameter of the body is 9.4 millimeters or 0.37 inches. The diameter of the grip is 7.6 millimeters or 0.3 inches. The overall length when closed is 3.8 inches or 96.6 millimeters. The length overall when posted is 4.89 inches or 124 millimeters. And the weight overall is nine grams or 0.32 ounces. So it's just tiny. And when I hold it in my hand, you can see that it is doable, it is postable. And because the diameter, let me cap this now because I don't want the nib to dry out. The diameter is similar to, you know, a basic ballpoint pen or a disposable Bic pen. It's not, it's maybe just slightly smaller than this Zebra. The Zebra does have a larger knurled grip on it though. So I use pens of this size and it's fine. This one works. It does work for me. And obviously if you have smaller hands than me, it would work even better, but it is just absolutely tiny. I did purchase the separate 1.5 millimeter stub for this pen. I'm not sure how well that will come up on camera, but it came with a fine nib. Um, and I have that separate here. And one of these guys, I got this from Goulet. The 1.5 millimeter stub came in this little container from Goulet and I placed the metal nib or the uh, fine steel nib in there. You can get, Golden Caveco nibs, they're about 160 bucks, 150 bucks, depending on where you get them. I've never used one of their gold nibs. Um, their steel nibs have been kind of hit or miss for me. I think on, I can't remember if it was this one or my plastic Caveco Sport, it had some hard starting problems and a little bit of uh, uh, baby's bottom on it. I had to polish it out. I haven't actually tried the fine nib on this one. I just took it out immediately and put the 1.5 millimeter stub. And I have had a few issues with hard starting and I don't know if that's the nib or if it's just the fact that a 1.5 millimeter stub is a little bit larger than I'm used to. I have a 1.1 millimeter stub on my Lamy Safari here and I like that a lot. It works really well. But the 1.5 is just a bigger, bit bigger than I've ever used and I may just be having trouble aligning the nib a little bit, but I'll show you that when I do a little bit of writing. The body of this pen is aluminum. You have to unscrew it to take the cap off, and then you do have to screw it in to post. Um, some people might find that to be an issue. It's not as quick as a pen that you can just pop off and pop on the back, but it's not too bad. It's only a few turns. Um, the ink capacity is about a little less than one millimeter in the standard international cartridge. If I take this out, you can see how it unscrews. And there's that little Caveco cartridge here. I think I have, you know, I thought when I wrote my little writing sample that you'll see later that this was pearl black, but this actually might be the midnight blue. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is midnight blue. You can purchase these with the steel nib in extra fine, fine, or medium. As I said, I got it in, in fine, but then I placed the 1.5 millimeter stub in there. In addition to the Caveco ink cartridges that you can use, like so, here's a pearl black, here's the midnight blue, you can also use any other standard international cartridges, short. So this is the Diamine, uh, what is this, Ancient Copper. So basically the exact same form factor as the Cavecos. So that's nice. You have a good variety of different inks that you can use. They're just the standard international short, though. I originally purchased this because I wanted something small enough that I could fit into my Midori Traveler's Notebook passport size. So if I put all of this stuff to the side and show you here, obviously this pen is tiny. If I want, I can place it 
inside the notebook with the clip and then close it up and it still stays pretty compact. So it is a good solution, I think, for the Midori. You could also clip it, you know, if you get one of those Midori pen loops, you could clip it on the outside. I like it to be a little bit more compact, a little bit more self-contained, but this is working for me. I just, I don't know how comfortable I am writing with it yet. I've only had it for a couple weeks, so your mileage may vary, and obviously if your hands are smaller than mine, you may have more success, but I think I'm getting used to it. It's just, it is very light too, and it's available in a copper and also a fire blue metal, and those ones I'm assuming would be more heavy, would feel a little bit more substantial in the hand. This one is very light, as, as it is aluminum. I'm assuming it's gonna be fairly robust I'm also assuming, though, that it is painted, so I don't know if after a while screwing and unscrewing the section to put new ink cartridges in, posting the cap, um, capping the pen, if eventually that's going to rub off some of the paint around the threads. I don't know. No, it isn't, actually. So here you can see inside the threads are just that aluminum. In the Caveco Brass Sport, the threads inside are actually plastic. There's a plastic sleeve inside the cap. Obviously the threads here are just the brass. So I don't know if that's gonna help longevity or hurt longevity for either one of these pens. I'm assuming this is gonna be fairly robust. I guess it depends on how often you uncap it and post it. But the build quality feels good. It just is very light and very petite, obviously. So how does it write? Well, you should ignore the Caveco Pearl Black that I have there. It's actually the Midnight Blue. But it writes well once it gets going. Let me just show you if it's gonna have any of these hard starting issues. And obviously, I'm trying to write with a tripod in front of me, so it might be a little bit difficult or more difficult for me to align the nib, nib than it would be normally. But you can see it is having a few starting issues. Once it gets going, it's fine. Typically, seems to put out a good amount of ink. And that's not really something that I could fault this pen for because it did come with a just typical fine Caveco nib. Um, this 1.5 millimeter stub, as I said, it could be a little bit of me not being able to align it properly. It could be that this needs a little work on it. I do have some micro mesh, mesh pads that I could use if I needed to, but it puts out ink well once you get going with it. You can just see how that looks. I really do like the look of the 1.5 millimeter stub, but I think maybe eventually I'd get a 1.1 millimeter stub for this. But it looks good if you're trying to write in the sort of faux Spencerian handwriting that I use. This pen is absolutely tiny <laughs> and obviously i have large meaty paws and your hands might not be as big as mine but you have to keep in mind that this pen is probably smaller than you think it is if you're deciding to purchase this but yes it is very compact and it's a pretty nice utilitarian pen so there you go the caveco lilliput in the special edition green color if you're looking for a small fountain pen, I don't know if you could get any smaller than this. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later.